shout out to Stasa23 for this video idea. I will be tagging him down in the description so you can not only go and watch his version or his video, you can also go and check his channel out. Now the video idea is basically building an EDC or building a knife collection, I guess you could say. So building a knife collection for somebody who might be starting off or maybe you already have start off and you just wanna know some interesting knives to have in the collection. Now I tried to give you a couple different options for each category and my categories are different than um, Stasis. So first one or first category is dirty users. And I'm considering dirty users as basically just easily replaceable knives. These are knives that you can easily replace if you break, lose, or, you know, and you can just basically take them out in the field, beat the heck out of them. And you know, you're not going to feel bad for it. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to break the bank. Now everybody's price range is a little bit different. And these are, I think around 50, $60, but it depends on which version you get, because there is D2 options. This one is the VG 10 option. Um, it's either VG 10 or, um, or 10 CR, but it does have a deep carry clip. Um, that is reversible and it has a crossbar lock. It's nice and slicey. It's very ergonomic, um, nice and slim too. And it's just a great overall profile and a great user. It is riding on bearings, by the way, too. Then you have the Rat 1. Now, this is a classic. I threw it in here just because this is a knife that is so damn tough. It, it's shockingly tough. Uh, this knife is made to actually break to have a catastrophic failure before it slips. So you're not gonna, the lock's not gonna slip. It will actually break before it slips, making it basically turn into a fixed plate. Um, but the lockup, nice and strong. These things are very ergonomic. And you know, they go for like 35 bucks. You know, there is different sizes. You can also get it in a small, um, the small or the large one. And there is an S35VN version and there's a lot of different options. Everything will be linked down in the description. And I might actually link a couple different sources for each model, you know, especially like the, the San Remnews. These knives have been around for a very long time. Not this model, but San Remnew. San Remnews, um, you know, they've had, they've been in business for, for a long time now. And, you know, they do make good quality knives for, the for you know the money um and then one other one really quick i had to throw this one in there this is the olatons these things are like 54 bucks but for 54 bucks you're getting three blades you get three different blades so you have a sheep's foot blade a serrated blade and then the drop point blade in 9 cr 18 mov it also comes with the tool inside here so you can easily just keep everything packaged there goes the tool. Um, you can keep everything packaged right up in here. The tool just fell, otherwise, you know, you would see it right now. And then you can keep it, you know, packaged up, you know, stored somewhere or just carry it right in your pocket. It is an awesome, awesome knife. It is riding on ceramic caged bearings. This one's on washers. Um, now, washers might detract dirt a little bit better than bearings, but bearings you'll be able to rinse out without having to take apart. Once washers get dirty, you do have to take them apart and clean them. Um, with, with the bearings, you can just rinse them out. But this is a titanium frame lock with a deep carry clip, nice solid lockup, steel lock bar insert, um, and it's only for 54 bucks. I think the price might go up very soon, but I, I, to me, that's a no-brainer. And like I said, it's just an easy knife to buy and, you know, if something happens to it, big deal. And you're getting premium materials. Next is the lightweight, a lightweight knife. Now, the first one I'm going to bring up is another San Remnu. This is the 255L. Now, the 255L runs with 10CR. 15 MOV steel. And what's so lightweight about this thing is there's no liners. It's just G10. There's two little tiny liners just for the locking mechanism. You can see it all right there. And I like how they put this plate back here. So this is the stop pin. And it's a plate that kind of goes around like that. You can see the screws right there. That's how big the liners are. The rest is just G10. Now the clip actually is long on the inside too. So you just unscrew that and you can pull it out and you can slip it in this side if you want to. And basically the scales are, are creating tension on this so you can't yank it out. But it is extremely lightweight, very fidgety. You know, it's got a, um, a nice uh, thumb flick. The thumb studs are nice and grippy. They're well placed. It's very snappy. It's ergonomic. And, and you know, it, it's a decent size. It's actually probably the most common and most practical size for most people's EDC. Next, you know, the Send Cut Arc Blast. Now, this is a button lock. This is a brand new model. I freaking love this thing. Uh, this is not only super fidgety, 
But it has aluminum handles and it has a deep, deep hollow ground 9CR 18 MOV blade. Um, very thin geometry. You can get good ergonomics. Now, if you don't like button locks, you could go with the pintail, the Civivi pintail. This is just, this is basically the same company. This has a super deep hollow ground drop point blade. The only thing is, this one's not as ergonomic as this one. You can see you get a little bit more handle grip right there. But this is still really, really good, and it does have the thumb studs and flipping action. But both of these are great users. They're very lightweight. These come in, well, this comes in different colors. This one comes in different handle materials, including micarta. And, oh yeah, by the way, this one comes in S35VN blade steel or Damascus. So this one is the Damascus one, obviously, which Civivi does a good job with their Damascus. But, uh, but yeah. Fantastic lightweight users here. Now, if you want to go USA made, you should go with the Hogue Deca or the RSK Mini, the Hogue Ritter, the Doug Ritter, made by Hogue, RSK Mini. Now, the, the RSK Mini is, you know, obviously a smaller version to the large one, so there is a larger version of this. I have aftermarket original goat scales on both of mine. You don't have to do that for this one, <clears throat> but in my opinion, Unless if you get the G10 version of this, if you get the FRN version, while it's extremely, extremely lightweight, I recommend just getting the aluminum scales from Original Goat. It makes it not only just feel so much more comfortable in the hand because you don't get the flex or anything, but it feels 10 times tougher. Um, Original Goat does a really good job. It'll still be 100% USA made because their scales are 100% USA made. Now, I can't link the Hogue Ritter down in the description, but I can link the scales. So you will have to just search that one for yourself. But the, the Hogue Deca, one of my all-time favorite lightweight EDCs. An all-arounder. Now, what is an all-arounder for? An all-arounder is just a knife that you can easily grab that you know it's going to be good for whatever you run into for the day. And mine is the Spyderco Capara. I picked this because I normally would pick the Spyderco Manix. Um, I probably would have picked the Manix uh, lightweight <laughs> for either the lightweight or, or for an all-arounder because I think this is badass. But this is the one that uh, Stasa 23 picked. So, my next option, which actually, you know, in a lot of cases, I might even pick this one over the Manix because, well, one, it comes with beautiful carbon fiber scales. I'm actually thinking about swapping mine back because I kind of miss having the carbon fiber. It comes with a red backspacer. This, this is mega comfortable in the hand. You can choke up. This blade shape is probably one of those versatile blade shapes you could get you know it's basically a drop point but the way how it's elongated and it doesn't have a lot of taper from the edge you have a lot of cutting edge you can also do great utility cuts it's going to be good for food processing opening packages cutting it's going to be good for everything then it has a compression lock which is a nice strong locking system so you got fidget factor it is on washers you got a deep carry, reversible clip. Um, these um, scales came from Rip's Garage. Uh, but the blade steel on this is S30V. Um, Spyderco does a really good job with their S30V. Like a really, really good job. All the steels that Spyderco uses, they do a good job with. And that's why if you're really worried about your steel and getting the most out of your steel, um, I do recommend Spyderco. Now, there's other companies that do a good job with certain steels, but Spyderco does a good job all the way around. Jet knives. So this is actually the first time this is going to be shown on the channel. This is the new Jack Wolf Knives Sharpshooter Jack. And this is a slip joint version of the Gunslinger. So you can see we have the Gunslinger here next to the Sharpshooter. Now let's get this one out of the way because this one is sold out. So you cannot get that one. I will pull up a different one that you can get, but this is the new model. It is not released yet, but depending on when you're watching this, it might be released because it's being released very, very soon. Now, it has a S90V super deep hollow ground clip point blade, very traditional, um, and you know, it's very gent like. Now, personally, I love the way this blue fat carbon fiber looks with the all black. You know, it, it to me, this is just absolutely gorgeous. 
Um, I really wish we would see him do some of these slip joints with, with the clip option like he does for his locking versions. Um, by the way, this is one that is available right now. And you know what? Just to remind you guys, check out the Neve Knife Co. site. Um, anytime you guys go into the description, you guys are going, going to go to the links. Check out the Neve Knife Co. site. We, we, in many cases, have some of the stuff that, you know, I'm featuring. Not all the stuff, you know, but, like, we do have a couple more um, of these Jack Wolf Knives After Hours Jacks, which is my favorite Jack Wolf to date. But anyways, as far as jet knives go... You know, I, I would say that he is, Jack Wolf Knives are abs is absolutely killing it in the gent knife department. This is a beautiful knife. It's very slicey. It, you know, it's got great walk and talk. Great blade steel, great geometry, literally great everything. And it does come in multiple different versions. So this is just one option. So there is other color options. Now, really quick. If you want to go with something else, you always could go with the Rivery uh, from Concept, Concept Rivery. Now this comes in lots of different versions from a budget version all the way up to a premium version like this one. This one has the Damascus steel. Concept does a good job with their Damascus. Then it has a titanium bolster lock. And then this one has the Tiffany Blue G10 scales. I think the Tiffany Blue scales look beautiful. I freaking dig it. I love it. Uh, but very ergonomic, very fidgety. This is one of the easiest front flippers to use because you can use it like a regular flipper or you can use it with your thumb. Like you can just use it any direction. It just works. Now, like I said, there's budget versions of this. So, you know, if, if this is a little bit out of your price range, you can always go with the budget version. This one's all titanium, by the way, including the clip and the backspacer. But yeah, there's also, like I said, since there's different versions, there's different blade steels as well. Something slim, something slim. So my first option is going to be the Civivi Clavi. Now there is a Sen Cut version of this. It's not the Sen Cut Clavi, but it's the Sen Cut something. It looks very similar, has the same action. But this one is the little bit more um, premium one using Nitro V Steel with a beautiful, great example of a Warncliffe blade. And this is very slicey. This is precision. It's basically a glorified letter opener, but Damn it, is this thing slicey. I mean, you you can, if for opening things up, tracing things out, utility cuts, this thing is, is probably one of the, mo the most useful knives you could get. And it's so lightweight, it's so slim, it's so easy to carry. And the front flipper, if you're not good with front flippers, you can roll it around. So you don't have to flick it, but you can flick it because it does have a great detent and a great front flipper. You can also do the reach over, but if you're not good at it, you can easily just roll it around because as you bring it around, it does lock itself up with this liner lock. G10 scales comes in different color G10. Um, the non-deep carry clip is what I prefer on this because it's slim. And since it's so slim, you know, you don't want a deep carry clip in the hand, but yeah, fantastic knife. Now, if you don't like front flippers, then you could always go with the mini uh, bag lighter. So the mini bag lighter <clears throat> comes in lots of different options. This one's a 20 CV option with fat carbon fiber, but there's even more affordable options with micarta. And I think, I think it's 154 CM. I'm not hundred percent, but, or no, it's N690. Sorry. N690 steel. It does write on ceramic cage bearings. This is one of the smoothest mini knives you'll ever find. I mean, especially for thumb stud action. I mean, this thing is just redonkulously smooth. The thumb studs and the detent is tuned to perfection. It is very, very fidgety, but you know, it's a compact little knife while not being thick. You know, it's nice and slim in the hand and nice and slim in the pocket, very lightweight. And like I said, it comes in lots of different flavors for you. I freaking love it. Now this does come in a large and an extra large version. The large version is the same thing, just a little bit longer, a little bit different blade shape, but same idea. And then the XL comes with a button lock with um, a flipper and thumb studs. Let's get to the next category. Something small, something small and compact. We're going to start off with the Spyderco Dragonfly. This is in K390. Now you could also add this into the lightweight um, category. There's a lot of these knives you could flip to a different category if you wanted to, but this is a very, very small knife. Very, very lightweight. It's like paper light, um, but it's K390 steel, which Spyderco one does a phenomenal job with, but two, 
it's just a beast mode steel. This is like, it's, it's absolutely my favorite steel at the moment. I love K390. It takes some of the most sharpest edges I've ever experienced and it holds the edges better than any other steel I've ever experienced as far as, you know, like polished edges and stuff. But you know, um, it's just a fantastic steel all the way around. And like I said, this thing is, is very tiny, very compact, very lightweight. Now you could also go with the Chaparral. The Chaparral is a very slicey knife. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit more robust as far as size goes than the Dragonfly, but it's even slicier with the geometry. Very, very slicey. CTS XHP steel. I think Spyderco does a phenomenal job with their CTS XHP. Mine does have titanium hardware. This was aftermarket, uh, but it comes with FRN scales with a deep carry clip that is reversible. Again, another backlock. Now, if you don't like backlocks, you could go with the Mini Native. Um, so the Spyderco Mini Native or Small Native, it is a, all, well, 100% USA made, first of all, but it uses a compression lock rather than the back lock. So it might be a little bit easier for you to use if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, I wouldn't recommend this one. I'd recommend one of these. S30V Steel, again, Spyderco does a really good job with it. It's a little utility cutter, but it, it is a little bit girthier in the hand. So you're getting a little bit more leverage in the hand when you get something like this. Um, but awesome, awesome knife. I freaking dig it. It is riding on, all these are riding on washers. Now, if those were out of your price range, you could always go with this little Trivisa. This is a little compact knife, very, very small. Like you don't expect it to be as small as it is. It's like a three finger knife, but you can cram four fingers on there. More of a pinch grip knife. 14C, 28M blade steel. Love the blade steel. Good access to the lock bar. Good access to the hole deployment. It's a great slow roller, but you can also reverse flick it. Um, but yeah, yeah, just a little compact micro knife that, that's actually very useful and it works really good. The next category is something interesting. Everybody needs something interesting in their knife collection. This is the Kaiser Grazioso, a Manganis design. And this one has the brass bolsters with really good quality micarta. I love the way these complement each other. It also comes in black G10 with copper, which also, you know, complements itself very well and looks really good. Uh, very ergonomic. It has a harpooned recurve blade, which you don't see very often. It has N690 steel and it does come in a premium version, good access to the lock bar, great flipping action, and it does have a brass backspacer as well. Not reversible with the clip, but it is deep carry. And you know, it's a liner lock action knife that, that is, you know, it's not gonna break the bank, but it is something unique, it's something different. The Beg Knives Bodega. Now this is a budget version of a super premium knife, a uh, handmade knife that, uh, that's been around for a long time, but this has, you know, it has an aggressive look. It's kind of unique. You know, it has the holes in the harpoon drop point blade. It has the holes on this side as well to kind of complement it. Lots of hardware. It has the ceramic ball clip, good access to the lock bar, and it also has aggressive jimping on the lock bar without it being aggressive to your finger. It feels really um, well done. And then the flipper tab and flipping action is some of the best you'll find on any knife. I mean, it is phenomenal action. This thing cranks out there. It's funny how strong the detent is on the flipper, but yet the reverse flick is nice and easy. So very ergonomic. And you know, like I said, it's just something a little bit more unique and a little bit more out there. And then just one more, if you want to go with a little bit more premium, you could always go with the Riet EXO, the gravity knife. Now this is a locking version. So you can carry it in the pocket because it has a clip and it has a lock. So you can lock it inside the pocket. It comes in a few different blade shapes. There's all different sizes. This one's the medium. I'm not sure if this exact one is available right now, but they do have the mini available and I think the large version. Um, but awesome, awesome knife. This one's in 3V steel with a double-edged dagger, titanium scales. Mine has burlap, but there is other options. Um, like usual, there's gonna be other flavors. This knife is not only fun to play with, but it's also, you know, it's unique. It's different. It's not like anything else out there, which is really cool. It has a cool sound. You know, this is something that when you hand to somebody, they're, you know, they are pretty fascinated with it because it is really, really cool. Hard use, a hard use folding knife. 
I'm going to go with the Cold Steel 4 Max. This thing is an absolute behemoth. It's a monster, but damn it, is it tough. I mean, just getting it in your hand, you can feel how solid this thing is. But when you watch the testing done on these, you realize how indestructible these things really are. This thing it is tough as nails. And, you know, it's a knife that'll survive through just about anything you throw at it. And for a folding knife, that's remarkable. It has a nice big blade. This one has Aus 10 steel. So this one's a little bit more affordable and it has thumb stud action with the triad lock, the tried and true triad lock, which is, you know, the strongest lock on the planet and definitely the strongest lock as far as being durable over long periods of hard use. Made in Taiwan. Just in case if you don't want to get something this big and this crazy, you could always go with the Spider Co. Manix XL. This is a very strong lock. It's also fidgety, so it's gonna be a little bit easier to, to not only carry, but to handle and maintain. Um, not that this one's difficult, like like you've seen, you've seen, I, I can do this one-handed, but it's obviously gonna be a, little, a lot heavier and a lot thicker, a lot bigger. This one is not gonna be as hard use as this one, but it's very slicey, very capable, great heat treat, good locking system, and it's just a badass knife all the way around. Also, for a tough EDC hard use knife, you could always go with the Benchmade Griptilian. Now, this one's the Mini. I do have the large one. I just can't find it for some reason, but the Mini is... It, you know, it's the same thing, just a larger version, and I freaking love it. I think everybody should have a mini grip in their collection. This is a knife that's iconic. It's been around for ages, and it's just a tough-as-nails knife. It's a knife that, that survives. Um, even my large one, I've had for years, and the thing is still rock solid and is still, you know, just as good as it was out of the box. Now, the mini, in my opinion, is a phenomenal little hard use knife. So if you want something compact, something small, something lightweight, but something that's strong, durable, and tough, this thing has, you know, somewhat of a thicker blade stock. So it's going to be a little bit tougher and it does come in a drop point too. I think the sheep's foot is the best blade shape from it, but the FRN scales are very grippy. It's very comfortable. It's easy to carry, easy to flick. Even with gloves on, you can easily deploy this and get it closed and put back in the pocket. And the big one, you know, it is just as good as the mini. So I would say one of these three knives for a hard use knife. And then a fixed blade. Now there's a lot of fixed blades I can recommend, but if you're on a tight budget and you want something really good quality, I do recommend the Harpoon from Kaiser. It is just a little Harpoon blade, micarta scales that are extremely, extremely comfortable. It is D2 steel because they did have 10V versions, but they're all sold out. Um, they might be coming back with them. I'm not sure, but this is just an all around really good little knife. Now it's not going to be something that uh, you're going to really beat on to the extent of being like a camp knife or anything like that, but it is a great EDC knife and you could use it for stuff like that, but you know, it's more, it's a little bit more precision, a little bit more slicey. You can see the coating is not going to hold up, especially during hard use, but the red micarta scales, I think there's only one, one of these left right now. If you want to get the, um, the Deadpool edition one, um, and then and it does have snaps for the belt loop. So, you know, you if you don't want the snaps, if you don't want to carry scout carry, you could always switch this to like a tech lock or some other sort of clip to, to put on your sheath. Uh, but I love that knife. Now, if you want to go USA made and maybe a little bit tougher and you want to be able to be a little bit tougher on it, this is the Bradford Guardian. And there's lots of different versions of this, different sizes. Um, this is a great EDC size while also being, you know, thick, robust, and tough. And, and it's also still plenty slicey to be, you know, just a great cutter. Nitro V steel, which is a very tough steel. It has G10 scales with a lot of grippiness to it. And there is a lot of different color options um, available. Comes with a leather sheath. I do wish it was a Kydex sheath, but you can carry the Scout Carry, and it does hold it pretty snug. So, you know, just an all-around badass knife from the USA Bradford Guardian. So, there you guys go. These were 
great knives to start a knife collection or to get into knife collecting. There are so many phenomenal knives. There are so many companies. I could have just recommended all their knives from, from specific companies, but I wanted to break it up a little bit and show you guys some stuff that you guys might not always see. And you know, you also got some options that you might see quite often because they are very popular and are such good knives. Anyways, work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.